Hey guys, welcome back to another music marketing live session. I'm Charles Klein, singer, songwriter, and producer. So welcome to the channel. I'm just going to wait um, for people to join the live chat, and then we're going to get into music marketing and specifically the music marketing funnel. I want to talk about the music marketing funnel and what a funnel is. It is a term used throughout, you know, the marketing world and the business world and that's a world where I've spent a lot of time in and where I've come from before pursuing my music career so I want to talk about the music marketing funnel and how we can leverage these standard business and marketing practices to our music so we can make money with our music and get more people build an audience essentially we want to use this music marketing to build an audience so how's everyone going please say hi in the live chat tell us where you're from what time it is are you waking up are you having coffee let's uh let's have a chat i'm typing something in the chat right now what do you guys think i'm saying i'm typing welcome to the music marketing live session Yeah, so seriously, let's let's talk about how we can use the music marketing funnel to build an audience for our music. And use the chat window, please, to ask questions. I'm going, this is a live session. So on Mondays, I do a live session where we talk about music production. And on Fridays, we do live sessions that talk about music marketing. So if you have music production questions or Logic Pro specific questions, feel free to just pop them into the chat and I'll make note of them on my little pad here and maybe we can discuss them in the next uh, Monday live session or I can prioritize them and maybe make an actual video if enough people are interested in the, to in the topic. So in the chat though, this is a music marketing live session. So in the chat, tell us where you're from, uh, what time it is, and if you have right away music marketing questions that I can answer, feel free. Or I'm going to get on to kind of a bit of a small masterclass on how we can leverage the music marketing funnel, and which is this, and how we can actually use this to our advantage to get people to build an audience. Okay, so um, the first thing, the first thing to mention is um, how I came up with the idea of this kind of live session video. Is I was scrolling through YouTube the other day. And like I always am, I watch a lot of YouTube videos um, and there's a lot of music marketing channels, people who are discussing how to market your music that are talk about specific ways, um, specific tools you can use. And I know, and specifically Instagram, Instagram is actually a big tool where you can use to grow your music. However, I want to kind of debunk a bit of that in this video. I think there's a lot of truth to having an Instagram account and growing an audience that way, but I do want to debunk some of the issues of Instagram and how it's not really um, kind of, it's putting all your eggs in the wrong basket, if you, if you will. So let's talk about the awareness, consideration, conversion, loyalty, and advocacy here. So, um, and the awareness is like, your reach so think of that like at the top of the funnel and like this is like a funnel right like this is what you would have in your kitchen where you're trying to like put salt in the salt shaker and like you can't do it without a funnel right you need to start wide and then at the bottom of the funnel is like a little spout there so where people are where i see a lot of musicians and um okay let's let's first backtrack if you're if you're kind of just joining this video and you're like who's this guy talking about music marketing what the heck does he know good point um i wouldn't just jump into any live video and listen to this dude like talking about how to do music marketing so fair enough respect to that but however i do come from experience with inside the marketing world and so i worked at a tech company for a long time doing marketing not music marketing but i was doing marketing and we grew the company from very small to very big so i do have uh, a lot of music not a 
the marketing experience. Now I have music marketing experience and since doing, um, since kind of switching my whole career and, and doing music. So that's kind of my pedigree and without getting into too much detail because I don't like talking about myself, but so I do have some experience. Now, let, now let's get back into it a little bit. So I see a lot of other musicians out there not leveraging proper thinking of marketing and not and in consequence not leveraging the right tools. So um, have you found yourself in the position before where you're releasing music and you know you got your song like the whole creative aspect and stuff is good. But, and you have an Instagram account, let's say, and then you release your music and you get like 50 streams, maybe a hundred streams, maybe even a thousand, but then nothing happens afterwards. So this is normal, by the way, like it's called hot, like, um, first spike growth after you release a song where a lot of people will listen to it in the day after it drops. So that's completely normal. That happens to big companies too, and they make announcements and stuff. However, what you want to do is to try to sustain growth afterwards, after you release a song. And this is where a lot of musicians struggle because they don't know how to sustain growth because they've really just put all the thought into releasing one song. So how do you sustain growth? And one way to do it is building an audience. Okay, so how do you build an audience? To build an audience, you need to, let's use the the analogy of a fishing net. You need to cast a wide net over the internet and inside this net, you're going to catch people that you like. And so whether it's a marketing funnel like we have here or whether it's a net, you see how at the top it's really wide and the net you cast, it's going to be a really big net. And then you need to cast that net over like these fish that are going to be potentially interested in your music and then they'll fall down the funnel you'll catch them in the, net, in the net and then hopefully they'll be a loyal fan. But what I see a lot of musicians doing is they're not casting any net. They're not starting wide and they're really just starting too small. And so you're not going to get enough volume and your conversion will be already super low. So you're not even going to convert anyone. Okay. What does that mean? So basically it is a volume kind of game. You need to have huge numbers because conversion is always going to be, you know, this step in the stage here, conversion is always going to be like four, probably between four to 10% maybe. And so if you're only going to like, if you only have 200 followers on your Instagram account and half of them are your friends, that's a super low conversion on people that are going to buy your music. So you need to cast a net that has like millions of people and then you'll have 4% conversion on that. And then that's a significant conversion on that volume. And then you can actually sustain a living with that. So how do you get um, a net that casts a million people? Okay, that's pretty much now that we've kind of narrowed all this thinking down to this question. This is pretty much the question that um, I want to answer in this video, but couldn't have been answered unless I did that whole pre ramble. Yes. Thank you for asking a comment. So huge pre ramble music marketing. This is what happens by the way. And when um, no one asks comments, I'm just going to ramble. So I'd rather have a conversation with you guys and just like, if you just ask questions. So, oh man, you redacted your, your comment. How do you cast a net? Okay. Uh, cause I think you probably retracted that comment cause I asked it myself. So, okay. How do you cast a net? You need you cast a net by looking at um, different ways or tools, platforms, channels. These are all the same things on how you can get that reach. Okay, so for example, what are channels? Like you can cast a net on Facebook. You can cast a net on Instagram. You can cast a net on TikTok. You can cast a net by knocking on people's doors. You can cast a net by standing outside the grocery store and giving flyers about your music. These are all kind of channels about where you can cast a net. And then you just have, you have to prioritize on what channel works best for you. And you also have to prioritize what channels have reach. So you have to cast a net where you have reach. So reach is a super important um, metric or value that you need to look for when you're marketing your music. For example, 
Instagram does not have reach anymore. You cannot post a picture about your music and get reach. People that follow you will see it and they'll like it, hopefully, but it's not going to grow. You're, you're not casting a net of anyone who hasn't seen you before. And that's like the number one thing you need to think of is casting a net where people haven't heard of you before. And Instagram just doesn't do that. All the videos that say like how to hack the Instagram algorithm and use hashtags and like do this, like I really, really disagree with a lot of that stuff because it's not going to give you any reach. And if you spent time trying to grow an Instagram Instagram account for over a year now, it probably won't work out for you. The Instagram organic reach days are over. Okay, so that aside, what are what are platforms that have reach? TikTok has reach right now. It's a new platform and it's not saturated with ads just yet. So it is very possible to go on TikTok and get a hundred thousand views. I, I posted a video uh, in the uh, in the fall and I have almost 200,000 views on that video of people who have never heard of me before and they see my video and they're like I'm cool like I never heard of this guy and some people like the song and some people so here here's the funnel I posted the video on TikTok it got 200,000 views so that's the top of the funnel um, the considerations um, level here maybe let's say let's just let's do some math here okay so let's say I got 200,000 views let's say how many people do you think would let's say let's do a percentage so let's say 200,000 views and let's say I don't know like who considered my like my song on the generous side maybe let's say like 20 percent okay so 40,000 people said hmm interesting song okay and then who actually went to my TikTok profile and clicked the link um out of 40 percent another of uh, that conversion probably like maybe five percent okay two thousand people went to that conversion so two thousand people clicked on my TikTok link and went to my spotify profile to listen to the song okay out of that two thousand people that listened to the song how many people actually made it through and actually liked the song probably another like five percent so a hundred people and a hundred people i just got a hundred new followers who really really liked my music and then another two thousand really good impressions of people who i could retarget and give other videos to so this is how I think about music marketing and it's what I recommend you kind of start thinking how you think about it too and the approach of like really finding volume at the top and then using these metrics to funnel down and actually get loyal customers. Instagram isn't a platform anymore that has reach. TikTok is. So I recommend spending more time on platforms that have reach. Um, so those are like platforms that have reach. There are also platforms like that are, sorry, different platforms, channels that are tried, tested and true to get organic reach. And that's using techniques like search engine opt optimization or SEO, if you're familiar with these terms. And that's just using building content that you know people are searching for. So, all the social apps, they're not uh, really search based like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. You don't really go on these platforms and search for things. You're just kind of going and numbingly like scrolling through your feed. You might search for hashtags, but do a lot of people even search hashtags? Like ans answer in the comments, who searches for hashtags? Let's get some kind of data points here. I know there's four people watching this. So I'm going to put you four people on the spot right now and tell me if you, um, yeah, tell me if you search for hashtags because I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Like for me, I don't, I don't do, I don't go on Instagram and search hashtags. So I'm going to put you people on the spot here. Oh, I, that person didn't like me putting them on the spot. I think they left, but 
Quixie Music said no. That's enough data for me. I think just me, me and you, quits, quits, Quixie. That's a that's a tongue twister. Yeah, I I don't search for hashtags, and so, um. Okay, where we lost my train of thought. Um. Yeah, social apps are not search based. Based. So what you need to do. Okay, we were talking about SEO. Yeah. Exactly. Search search engine optimizations. <laughs> hey, Furkan. Yeah, how's it going? Yeah, I was losing my train of thought there. Thanks for jumping in, saving me. But I was talking about search-based algorithms. Should I change my name? No, no, no. Don't change your name. That's your name. Stick with it. Quixie. Quixie. It's actually not that hard. I mean, I could... I just probably, at the end of my day, I was... Um, it's 6 p.m. in Berlin right now, and I just had a long day producing a song. I'm kind of near near producing it, though, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So, But after a big day of production and producing a song, I'm kind of like a bit brain foggy, and so I'm not sure if it was like the smartest decision to go on live after a full day of music production, but I just thought, why not? Like these live sessions are really new to me and I'm, st I'm still getting comfortable on them. So I think the more you do, the more I'm going to get comfortable. And that's how I'm approaching it. Like I'm new to this. I'm no pro. And I struggle to like get on Instagram or get on YouTube live every time it goes live because I'm, I'm obviously like, this is new and I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, but I like to take things at the approach where you just kind of just got to like hustle up and do more and eventually it just becomes easier and that goes for anything if you want to learn guitar if you want to learn piano you want to learn songwriting producing you want to learn marketing which we're talking about in this video and we've totally derailed the conversation but you do more of the things and you get better at it it's way better at like spending lots of or the the alternative is like going every day and doing one thing and constantly getting better at it then like wait doing a little bit here and there and like ma be making it perfect and like writing 30 bad songs in a month is way better than just writing one good one i know that might seem counterintuitive but you're going to be a better songwriter after writing 30 songs that maybe aren't that good than spending your time just writing one hello hello official trendy Furkan, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, I'm interested about, yeah, what are, are you, how, Furkan, what's, um, what are, what's your number one social channel that you use to promote your music? Would you say it's Instagram or would you say it's Facebook or TikTok or YouTube? I'm curious to know you guys who are watching what are your social channels that you guys use to market your music? Because that's what this video is about, how we can market our music. For those just joining, there's like a funnel up here. It says awareness, consideration, conversion. What the heck does that mean? That is a music marketing funnel that we're talking about in this video. And we're going to leverage this to get streams. So I kind of just did a huge pre-ramble and about how Instagram doesn't give you reach anymore and some other channels that you can use to get reach and how like we talked about fish and casting nets. So you might want to like watch that again and that because I don't want to get into that huge ramble again. But yeah, okay, so YouTube. I just started. Quixie, are you using, would you say YouTube as well, Quixie? That's interesting. YouTube is definitely, yeah, me too. I'm on YouTube too. This is my number one for sure. And I'm a big fan of YouTube and the reach it has in YouTube. Because YouTube is so much different than any of the other channels because YouTube has the ability to do um, search-based reach. And you can also have make... Um, suggested videos reach so unlike instagram i know i feel like i'm like 
just like shaming Instagram for some reason, but unlike Instagram where you just go on, you don't search hashtags, you just kind of normally scroll on things. YouTube, you go on, you kind of just scroll on things too and the suggested feeds and you can kind of get in that black funnel or the black hole of things. But YouTube is also search based that you can make content that people are searching for. So when you type in the search bar on YouTube or you go to Google Trends or Google Keyword Explorer or like there's other keyword tools, you can find out what people are searching for. A lot of these tools are free. Find out what they're searching for and then make content for that. Hey, Burhani, how's it going? SoundCloud is good. SoundCloud is, is also good. I'm, I'm actually not sure of that. I know it has reach. I've never spent time in SoundCloud enough to really understand the SoundCloud game. I do have a SoundCloud profile and I think... I think I have like 160 followers, but that's that I haven't put any work other than just uploading my songs. So that kind that can kind of tell you, okay, if you don't put any work at all, maybe over like a year and a half or two years, you can get 160 followers without doing any work. And that's pretty, pretty good reach. So it's a really good example. Like if you started two years ago or today, a SoundCloud account and an Instagram account, in two years from now, how many followers would you have on SoundCloud versus on Instagram? And you didn't do any work at all. You probably would have more followers on SoundCloud because Instagram doesn't have the reach. SoundCloud probably pushes your content out there where you don't even know. Instagram just doesn't do that. Yeah, but Ronnie, what are you using for your main social app to market your music? And is everyone is everyone trying to push their music in this channel, like are people trying to market their music? And and are you are you struggling to build a fan base? Are you struggling to get Spotify streams and trying to like really, you know, get people messaging you and saying, I love your music and I wanna buy it? Like or is everyone just like, No, I'm killing it. Like I'm good, you know, I'm I'm a rock star. That's totally fine too, and probably that's awesome for you. I'm going to ask you, why don't you stream your music on a YouTube music channel? Um, like, are you talking, Furkan, are you talking like live, going live? Because my music is, is on YouTube music and all my videos are on, all my music is on YouTube. But if you're talking live, like maybe a live uh, live channel? Oh, yeah, were you, well, yeah, was that addressed to me? I, I think it was. But. Vivo. Ah, okay. You have Vivo in Turkey. And is is YouTube YouTube is YouTube more popular than Vivo in Turkey or or the other way around? Is Vivo more popular than YouTube? It's a good a good question. Oh no, Vivo is a YouTube channel. Okay. Okay, I'm confused. I thought Vivo was a a streaming or a video server. Oh no, it's Vimeo. Oh man. Yeah. End of the day for me. Vimeo. Okay, Vivo is a YouTube channel. Um is it just like a big YouTube channel? I think now that you're saying this, I'm I I, I remember it. Vivo Oh, is it all the pop stars have their YouTube channels on Vivo or something? Because every time I, I listen to a, like a popular music video, it's always like Vivo on the, on the night on the name. It's a site plus a YouTube site. Okay. Okay, I'm out of the mix on that. And um, what time is it for you guys there? 18 mil subs. That's a huge audience. That's a really big audience. Music distributor. Oh, and, and they're a music distributor. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to look into them after because I've also been doing some research on music distributors and some free music distributors. Um, I was looking at United Masters, Amuse, Rootnote, and 
uh, sound drop the other ones I was looking at they're all f they all have some really cool plans that are free to distribute but then like they take some of your royalties um, because I've been just using TuneCore and DistroKid for the most part of my music career but I'm just looking at different options because some distributors are starting to get pretty clever with how they um, charge you for example a muse is like giving free music distribution and you keep a hundred percent of your royalties but they will only um I th they will only uh distribute your music to four stores i think and it takes like four weeks and there's like some other limitations yeah that's super cool i didn't i didn't know that about Vivo. Anyways, thanks guys. I'm, look, I'm gonna look into that. But yeah, I, um, let me know also if you're if you have any music distributors recommendations. I'm always looking into things. I just yeah, like I said, using DistroKid and TuneCore r recently um, because I really think that game is starting to change too. Because TikTok is pretty much a distributor in its independence, if you will because you can upload your music to TikTok and make it available only on TikTok, but people can use that music and your your music can go viral. Like you probably watch TikTok videos that have sounds to it and those sounds have millions and millions of views. And so you can do that with your song as well. Like a bunch of my songs are on TikTok, not the actual official song, but more just like the recording of the song. So d TikTok is taking over, is I'm not taking over, but has really, change the landscape of music distribution um yeah but okay so kind of getting back to this funnel and so everyone is joining is kind of seeing this funnel again and like what the heck is going on right well we're talking about this funnel and how we can leverage it to our music careers and build a audience and we're talking about how to build reach and to find platforms with reach so most people watching and definitely in the comments everyone's kind of talking YouTube and yeah that's me too I have experimented with TikTok and have some had some success there a few videos have had over 100,000 views I think and so that's pretty pretty good and it's enough of a reach to get new eyeballs on things um, other tools are like standard tools Google doing search engine optimization on Google and building content for a blog so finding keywords in your niche, uh, and what does that mean, finding keywords in your niche? It means like, depending on the style of music you play or your interests, then you can build content around that. Maybe you are a punk rocker, and you know that people in punk music like to do the same things. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but like you find so maybe they like going to bars punk bars like write about the top 10 punk bars in your city and make punk content and start ranking that content on google and then people are like best bars in your city best punk bars in your city they rank your site ranks and they go on your site and then they're like oh your music is on the right side of the article right like it's not you're not pushing it it's like hey this is the article but i'm also here's my punk music it's like the perfect audience and it's free traffic. <clears throat> yeah, so it's it's kind of thinking about ways in order to get reach. And I can sit here talking about different ideas and how to get reach. Um, I could still keep going if you want. Uh, yes, that's right. There are a lot of lots of music becomes viral on TikTok. Yeah, I think out of the top 10 songs on Spotify, like Global 50, I think at least 30% is from TikTok, if not more. There was a time where it was like more than 50% or something, and even like the top three were from TikTok. So that's pretty wild. Um, oh, I read another stat where it's like so many artists or majors, major labels signed like a huge bulk percentage of their new artists from TikTok. And these are just like kids, right? Or, or like young 
people making music out of your bedroom and like that's what we talk about on this channel how do we make music like in our home studios because it's so easy and impossible to do that and <clears throat> excuse me not only is it like super easy to make music but it's also really easy to market your music and i know that can kind of like seem like tough to say because some some people are really struggling to build audiences but it's really kind of going against the grain don't also compare yourself to what other mu musicians are doing because it's not going to always be right for you you're going to watch lots of videos that say like do this and do this you're going to watch you're, you're going to listen to my video or this my videos and this video take what i'm saying with a grain of salt and don't actually go and do what i'm saying maybe <laughs> go and try it for sure and like what i'm saying is like go try stuff because you'll notice everything is different based on what you like and what your interests are but people are going to gravitate to you differently on each platform like i talk to my youtube audience like this super casual um like just here with you guys talking about music music marketing I don't, and it's long form video. Like we've been going for like already half an hour and I'll keep talking for, for a few more minutes, but like on TikTok, I never do this on Instagram. I never do this. So the followings on my platforms are always a little bit different. And that's just like, that is completely normal because apps are also a bit generational. Like I kind of grew up where Instagram was like the really hot app. And then the generation now, like you know, what is it called? Gen, what's the generation after millennials? Like I'm, I'm a millennial. Oh, Gen. Oh, I don't know. I can't, I need, someone told me the other day. Anyways, they grew up with TikTok. TikTok was the hot stuff. Snapchat was the generation kind of in between that. And so apps are generational in a way. And the Facebook is like our like pretty much anyone above generation. And boomers are like super into Facebook now. Like my parents are just like, into Facebook. I don't know why. Yeah. TikTok. Have you guys made TikTok videos? Have you guys experimented with that? And Quixie, what kind of music are you making? I'm just curious. Are you making... Indie music, pop music, punk, beats, folk. I'm curious, you got a fire logo, so I'm like, I wonder if you're making fire, fire beats. Not yet, okay, thinking about it. For Ken, when's your next single coming out? Do you have some music you're going to release this year? Rap is still finding my style. Yeah, it takes, it takes time to find, to find your style for sure. It took me a long time to find my groove. And I'm, I'm also, I find with my music, like constantly changing anyways, like every song or the songs I write every year are always just different in a way. It does kind of fit in that kind of indie pop alternative <laughs> umbrella but I find the songs I wrote two years ago even though although they're in the same umbrella I'm just writing about different things the production's very different and my interests are different <clears throat> hey QB view welcome welcome to the conversation we're just chilling here talking about music marketing and uh how to get how to build an audience and yeah for can uh, that's that's cool working on new music me too it's it's a uh, it's awesome to work on new music it's an exciting time to be that time where you're like just coming up with lots of ideas and like it's a bit nervous to like figure out what you want to write about and what's going to be good and stuff and then you get a good song and you're all hyped up kind of really like that feeling yeah it, yeah, don't 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 worry too much if it's if it's too slow. I think slow song like would you, are you talking it's is it a slower song? Cuz slower songs are definitely harder to market just because it's 
it's just a different vibe. I've noticed that with my songs, I, I have an, I have energetic, like the top song on my Spotify profile um, is a, an energetic song, a song, one that has more of an upbeat rhythm. And then my slower songs don't seem to do that well because, well, just take a look at the global top 50. Are there any slow songs in there? Not really, I don't think right now. Sometimes there are one or two, even like that hit by Lewis Compaldi, that was like, super big hit and like you know slow energy but his vocal is is great so it's it's hard to kind of convert on slow songs so i know what you mean yeah that's 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 a great segue to people want like funny music people want different music right and that's that's a great segue to talk about you in order to get in order to find the people that want to listen to your music, you need to cast a net that is so big that eventually, like, once the net is so big, eventually there are a lot of people that like your music in that net. But because you've cast it so wide over the internet, and, but if you're just kind of, like, showing it to 100 people there, 100 people here, it's okay that no one likes it out of those 100 people because that's just, like, not that many people to test on, you know, if you know what I mean. It's kind of like the the whole theme of this music marketing live video is finding channels that have reach because in order to build an audience, you really need to get eyeballs, get eyeballs that on people that don't know you. And you have to think of like, how how do you do that? And so when you're releasing new music, all you need to think about is, what are the ways I can get my song to people who have never heard of me before? Okay, obviously you gotta do the Instagram thing and not that whole thing, but that doesn't answer the question. Those, those posting on Instagram won't get your music to people that haven't heard you before. Posting on Facebook won't. Doing a YouTube video might, but it might not too, unless you're doing a search-based video or your video is has virality potential so you got to think mm, like okay getting on spotify playlists that's going to get in, you in front of people who haven't heard of you before so that's a good thing to focus on making a tiktok video will get you eyeballs of people who haven't heard of you before that's a good thing to focus on like getting your i have never actually tried this but like well, you can't do this anymore, but I wanted to take a stack of business cards and literally just like do door-to-door -door sales. And it would be really fast too, because you just knock on the door and be like, hey, here's my new song and here's a card. And then just walk away, like pass the card and do that for like 10 hours for a week for five days straight and pr try to get to like two or 3,000 houses. And then just like look at the graph, see if it worked. And then like, it might, right? Because then if you if you put a smile and they see you and take your card, then like the conversion there is probably a bit higher because they met you face to face. That doing that is so much more beneficial than like spending your time trying to build your Instagram following. And I know that seems like super weird, but like no one does that anymore. Like that's a different thing. Like you would probably be like the only person in your city to do that. And everyone's everyone's saturated the whole social market that like how many times a day or do you see a post where it's like, hey, listen to my new song? I see it all the time. And I'm like, that's great. Like I, I try to go check as much music as I can, but it's, it is overwhelming. There's like 40,000 new songs added to Spotify every single day. That's insane, right? Can you actually believe that? 40,000 songs. So that's 40,000. What is it? Seven days in a week, right? That's insane. 280,000 songs in uh, one week. Okay, let's do it by the year. So five times 52 weeks. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three, 14 million, 560,000 songs a year on average, let's say. Oh my gosh, that is wild. Okay, let's say, so <laughs> you're, you if you release on on like a good year maybe you'll release eight songs 
So that's eight. You are eight songs of 14,560,000 songs. So that that's perspective, right? <laughs> you need to find ways to get people to listen to your music because that's 14 other million. Well, okay. Let's say on average people that release eight songs. Okay. So let's divide that by eight. So it's still, you're, on, you're competing with almost two million people. That's wild. Like you have to come up with ways that think outside of the box because these two million people are doing the same thing. They're all posting on Instagram saying, come listen to my new single. Like if you don't do something different, you're just going to be like the other same person. So that's kind of a good ending. I like that. It's, it's inspiring. Uh, for Ken, that's good though. I mean, it's super nice that you do it for a hobby and, wa and watch these videos because I'm going on about like how you can do it and bring it up my calculator and stuff. So I appreciate you. Thanks for watching and sticking around. That's, uh, that's nice of you. And I think I'm going to call it there. So <laughs> that is the music marketing video. And drop me a comment in some of the other videos if you have any questions about this. If this was kind of too technical, please let me know. If it wasn't technical enough, please let me know because then I'll optimize on that. Because um, if I don't know what's what's happening on the other end, I'll just can't keep doing this. That's why I need data from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. And um, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Okay, actually, that's a good last question. And I don't want to leave because I just saw that. I've been thinking about how to grow from 1 to 1K. That's a, that is the hardest thing to do. <laughs> and I know that's not super, that's not what you want to hear, Quitsy. But once you get over the 1K, doors, it, it just gets easier. Oh, just pulled on my headphones. So the one to one K is such a mountain to climb that it can seem and, and not a lot of people do it right because it's so hard to climb. So you just have to know that it's hard. So how do you do it? Um, you need to have a plan and a strategy in place. And that sounds so like, Ooh, you have a strategy. And I hate that, that kind of saying that, but here's a better way to say it. You need to just like write out what you're going to do at least for a year kind of like a vision of what you're going to make and the things you're going to do and then just stick to that for a year and don't budge like optimize on things that are working and stuff but really focus tunnel vision on that and then after a year you can be like okay how many subscribers do i have obviously optimize along the way and tweak things here and there but what i'm trying to say is like you can't really focus on the metrics so much other than like just keep going and building content and making things and and like pushing it and then there will be a time where if like you keep doing that and still nothing's happening then you got to say like what am i doing wrong or like is this the right platform for me so yeah i know i could always answer later but i just really like that question because i find so many young musicians or even not young, but any musician just starting, anyone starting a new business or a new channel, it's such a hard grind at the beginning. And when you just overcome that, it start it does start to get easier because you you kind of find a groove. But at the beginning, you're like, oh, what do I do? But you just have to stick to something and go for it, and 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 work at it 365 days of the year, or just five days a week. Like, don't go crazy if you don't want to. You're welcome, Quitsy. Um, hope to see you guys in the next video. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, and and let's talk music production next Monday, live session, and I'll be posting videos uh, every day until then. So hope to see you.